mentioned just a minute ago uh, artificial intelligence, and we, you and I talked about this before that you had been involved in bioboards and stuff. W what's mm -hmm. your impression? Because you know that there's a conference in America next year. They wanted Jacques Vallée to speak there on artificial intelligence. Where do you think artificial intelligence is going? Do you think we're we're getting anywhere? Or yeah, well, well, from what I worked with, uh, well, it's about twenty-eight or twenty-nine years ago now. Um, <laughs> I mean, I was surprised. I was a contractor for NATO and I went in as telecommunications. And after a short time being there, I was introduced to a program which was run by, it was a joint program between NATO and Marconi at the time. And I was to, they had new racking systems, computer racking systems were brought in. And we had to have a delivered, um, well, they were nicknamed BioBorgs. I didn't know why at the time, just thought it was a nickname. Um, and had these that looked like a motherboard like you'd find in a computer and we'd have to literally fit these into the racking systems link them up and literally stand back for confirmation because what happens is that the signal from the bore communicates with three as far as we're non-listed satellites in, 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 in near orbit of earth and they signal back and confirm the connection and that is made and it signals and lights up and then we confirm that and then we move on to the next one. Um, the, the one of the biggest important things was telecommunications probably back then. I mean, you know, I mean, we, we worked in all sorts of areas. My father worked in those areas as well um, in regarding the Guardian Tunnels, which was the Guardian Tunnels houses all the most important lines in the, U in the UK. The, pres the Prime Minister's line, Parliament, military bases. So, and they, they owned a lock and key with, with bl nuclear blast doors underground, you know. So there, there is a, a very complex and high security surrounding these telecommunications. What I was working with when I first met these boards, I kind of twigged why they were called bio boards because they had three different components on there. And I give one as an example was the memory cells, which is a bio liquid plasma, which doesn't break down. One of the biggest problems we have in, in the computer uh, industry now is components breaking down, memory cells breaking down, hard drives breaking down, because anything moves, wears. And what they realized, obviously, at some stage, now, I don't know how long that had been in the field, this type of technology, but I can certainly say 29 years ago, I was fitting these boards into these racking systems, which had these things on them, these biological circuits. And I thought, well, well this is fantastic. And, you know, it's amazing. In, three, in a few years' time, everybody's going to have these in their homes. And, of course, we've gone all this time. I say nothing because... Um, part of me working on this program, I had to sign two official secrets act, and um, which I signed no problem. And because I didn't know what I was going to do, I just thought it's just maybe because I know where certain things are or how yeah. to do certain things, and that was generally it. Um, bottom line is, is that I thought this technology would be out sooner than it, it was still not out, as far as I'm aware. But I only started talking about this a few years ago when I read an article on the internet about IBM and they were about to, they confirmed that they were actually working on these biological boards, integrating um, uh, biological memory cells into them and they're going to be available soon. So I saw that about two, 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 two and a half, three years ago and I thought, okay, well, if they're doing it, I can pretty much talk about it and I've mentioned it. And it's surprising how many other people I've talked to around and about, which have kind of been involved in similar things. Um, different types of technology, but certainly with integrated biological systems in them. Now, it doesn't surprise me when we when we hear about from people's experiences, be it UFO or other, that there's a there's a part of that they, they talk about which seemingly seems biological in nature. Some of these ships uh, self repairing, um, uh, manipulated manipulation of of, of metal nanotechnology cells which can restructure themselves back to a given shape very similar to the old uh, roswell uh, yeah. foil we could we could bend and it would yeah. be back to shape i'm sure we've probably got all this technology now i'd be surprised if we haven't um i think we've probably got to a point now because they're probably so far ahead we can't even imagine yet what they might actually be working with i think what we are conceiving the idea now is probably something that might have been in the field for 50 years um, and we are finding new things out all the time, but it tends to get drip fed in, you know, it goes to the military industrial complex and then slowly over a period of years, little bits get drip fed. You know, I mean, we, 
it, it, we have to suddenly even think, you know, where does sudden technology come from? You know, when we start looking into the depths of, uh, for instance, um, uh, these, you know, light traveling down a tube at the speed of light, which is information, it's fiber optics. We, we all know it, heard of them. But that's a massive, massive leap in technology from the days of, you know, uh, be, uh, for the digital telecommunication size before that the you know the standard before we even went you know to digital and now all of a sudden fiber optics on the scene it travels at the speed of light it's light information traveling in the glass tube and you think to yourself people digest technology very quickly and don't ask the questions where's that sudden leap of information come from you know sometimes when you start researching looking into those things you start to find that it lies within the military somewhere at some point and then it kind of closed door you don't get to find out any more information yeah that it, so that leads me to the question of, of consciousness um would you see consciousness as being primary do you see matter creating consciousness or how do, how do you connect consciousness because that seems to be a big buzzword now into the ufo field or into technology do they know the connection to consciousness and do they do they understand it well of course you know they, we've probably been working in the we know that we've been working in the field of technology in in regarding consciousness because we know that we are we are limited by the physical actions the human body is, is a physical actions which are limited um, we've reached the barrier of how fast a human being can react when it comes to flying. Um, I was in talks with NASA um, last year in regarding a piece of software that we were involved in, and it was about data compression. And they were very interested, and the reasons why data compression is one of the big things right at the top of the list, is because the world is in demand of it. And the reason what they were interested in for is what, that they have a number of aircraft that were flying at tremendous speeds at low um, low altitudes the pilots have to maneuver that vehicle so it doesn't collide with tall items antennas buildings so on and so forth but it's low enough to keep on the radar that's exactly what they want to do because the radars are always never you normally at ground level because they pick up too much interference false signals or something all sorts of things back so they keep it at a certain height and altitude However, if they can come below that and fly uh, at the speed they want to, they'd have to avoid things very quickly. And we, they don't simply have the capabilities. Humans just do not have the capabilities to react that fast. But computers do. And we do know that, um, that we have equipment and vehicles, uh, aircraft, that can fly integratedly with consciousness now. Um, however, this is a data it's the data it's the problem because for computers to think as fast as the human mind that is going to require huge huge amounts of data between traveling at incredible speeds for them to react so fast to do that it's the storage and transfer and it's not just a matter of where we're going to put all this data but it's how to transfer it in such a high speed and this is where data compression comes in because if we can find something that will compress and decompress at half the speed of light, then there's nothing that is unachievable. And I think that is where they're going. They, they, they said to me, NASA, that they were very interested in the aspects of this being deployed to um, specialized military aircraft to fly at low altitudes so that pilots can't, do not need, they can literally let the computers do their work, if that's the case. And also really for space exploration, because more and more data is needed on, on spacecraft. Uh, you know, we, we want to take 4K photographs of the moon now. You know, we know how much 4K data takes, but transmission of that data also takes a lot as well. So uh, is, there's this data big line which they're trying to cross in regard to technology. Once we have a breakthrough in data compression, we're going to see all these wonderful things come to play. Weren't you working on this? Didn't you have something developed on the, you were working on something? Yes, we still are working on it. The, um, because obviously something of such magnitude takes a lot of, a lot of computer programming and then it has to go through bench testing and so on and so forth and under demand. Uh, this is known as the Delta Lambda compression software system. 
And how it works simply is that the larger the amount of information, the smaller the data compression can be. It's a reverse role. So the bigger it is, the, the smaller it is in compression to send. And it's, uh, it's done through um, a, a simple binary code information. It was, it was simpler than, you know, the people, a lot of people overthought it. And uh, the simplicity of this is that it, it will compress on the fly which means that the demand can be straight away. Um, what that really means now it has got to be tested. And the process of testing and these red tapes go on forever. Wow. You know, but um, this is, you know, we're, we're surely not the only people out there working on this now. I'm sure there's plenty of people that are working on this type of technology. And we're going to see a lot of wonderful things come forward once we get past this data compression line. <laughs> Uh, you, you mentioned moving data. I mean, the big, the big thing in America, I don't know if it's probably in Europe as well, is the 5G thing. You hear all these rumors stories about, you know, we're going to fry our brains and all this kind of stuff. Well, I've never heard you talk about it. What do you think about this 5G thing? Do you think it's a big threat like some people think? Uh, well, I certainly agree with most people that anything within those frequencies is not good for the human body. Um, when under discussions with people who I know who have worked in the field of 5G, um, and been involved in that type of work for quite some time. Even they had concerns and they had a protocol to deal with the complaints. Uh, and that was um, uh, shielded paint to put on your interior walls of your house and also certain devices which, which will scatter the 5G signals so that they don't build up in certain given areas. It seems that we, we build the problem and then we look to create, to build something to solve the problem. Yeah. Um, the effects is pretty unknown. I mean, it's always been this, it's going to be fall into one of those debatable things again. You've got some scientists are saying, yes, there's absolute evidence for it that it is not good and that it's, it's directly um, associated to certain frequencies that, are, that the brain, our brain utilizes. Uh, the effects are really could be a lot of different things and a lot of unknown question marks turn up and, we had exactly the same debate. We're pushing 11,000 uh, kilovolts through electronic electro pylons, was carrying electricity, and the effect, long-term effects of people living near them, because there was this debate that's been going on, can it cause illness for many years? And the debate is still there. 50% will say, yes, yeah, there's definitely evidence that something that happens. The other side will say, no, we've got no tangible evidence to support it. And I think this is exactly what's going to happen with 5G. One thing I can say is that the higher those frequencies are getting, the more in tune um, and um, less, less to be beneficial it would be for humans because of the amount of high frequencies uh, that the brain's associated with. We're going to start to see people being affected over periods of time. Wow.